Right, so now that we know how to graph rational functions, um, we do want to make sure that we can identify the domain and range of those functions as well. So uh, for today, we want to focus on finding, identifying domain and range of functions, as well as end behavior. And if we're coming along with end behavior, we're going to introduce the idea of limits today, uh, which, yes, yeah, so that is a calculus topic, so we're going to add that into some of the things that we're doing. So for our first example here, um, we have f of x is equal to x plus 2 over x squared plus 7x plus 10. So we do need to factor this, um, x plus 2 over x plus 2 and x plus 5 is what that factors into. Um, and then we do see that we have a whole at x is negative 2. Um, and so this graph is actually graphed for us. I don't know if you can see this here. We have an asymptote at negative 5 and it is bottom heavy, so that is an asymptote at zero. And then we have our graph here in the bottom left and top right. And then we have an open circle at that hole at negative two. We plug that back in, negative two back in. That was a terrible drawing of a hole there. Um, when we plug negative two in, we get one over um, three. So our, our hole ends up being at the value uh, negative two, one third. Um, and so if we want to talk about our domain, we're talking about which values are we including and which values are we excluding? So if we look at our rational function, if we start at negative infinity, we've included every value until we get to this first asymptote. So there is a value that we are skipping or we're not going to include in the domain. So the, our asymptotes and our holes are what we need to be skipped or jumped over in the domain. Um, you can always look at your denominator of your rational function, because even though holes cancel, whatever makes the denominator zero is going to be left out of the domain. So if we think about the domain as a, of a rational function as the set of all real numbers except the zeros of the denominator. So whatever makes the denominator zero cannot be in our domain. So in this, in this example, we have negative infinity um, until we get to negative five. And then union negative five to our whole at negative two. Union negative two to infinity and beyond. Um, and so our domain, we have two unions. Please notice that there are two unions, which means that those are the two values we're skipping over. Two unions, two x's. That is not a coincidence. Whatever your degree of your denominator will match um, how many unions you're going to have. Now for a range, it's very important that you look at the picture for your range. In this example in particular, um, we have two values in our range that we are not going to include. The first is our horizontal asymptote, which is at zero. The second is the y value of our whole, because that's an open circle there. That is a point that we're not including in our graph, and normally this would be connected, so maybe that'll look a little bit better if I draw it bigger. Uh, but our range here is going to be from negative infinity, if we start the bottom part of our graph here, and go up to zero. So from negative infinity to zero, and then union zero to our whole, which happens to be at one third, to one third, union, one-third to infinity. And so the, still looking at this same picture of this graph, um, we want to look at our end behavior. So that is as x approaches negative infinity. So as it goes to the left here, um, we see that our graph is approaching zero. Our graph is getting really, really close to zero, but never actually going to touch it. And then on the right side here, as we approach positive infinity, on the x-axis, our graph, or the y-axis, what is that doing? Our y values are getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but they're never actually going to touch or cross zero. So again, we have an asymptote at zero. All right, sorry, I'm sorry, end behavior at zero. And so the thing to notice here is that these values are always going to be your horizontal asymptote. Those, are, those end behavior values will match whatever your horizontal asymptote for is for rational functions. That's an important thing to keep in mind. We're going to take a look at the function x squared minus 5x plus 4 in the numerator and 2x squared minus, plus 2x minus 12. And so the first thing we want to do is factor these. So we're going to factor that x minus 4, x minus 1. And we'll take out a 2 here, x squared plus x minus 6. We'll have to factor that again. We have x minus 4, x minus 1 in the numerator over 2 times x plus 3 and x minus 2. All right, so now that that's factored, we can take a look at this. We see that um, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at 1 half, because that is uh, equal heavy. 
one half is kind of like in between there. There's one half. You see that we have solutions at four and at one. One, two, three, four. One, uh, one. We have asymptotes at negative three and negative and positive two. One, two, three. All right, and then um, we're gonna have portions portions of our graph here. We'll have this bottom part right here, bottom left. Sorry, bottom right. Um, our graph kind of looks like this. In the middle, this cubic here, and then we have our top left here. So what, we're care what we care about right now is domain and range. So our domain is we're looking from left to right. We could just factor the denominator and determine what our domain is. We have only two x's. Do not let this two on the outside here fool you. Only these two x's matter for our domain. So the two values that would make the denominator zero would be three, sorry, negative three, or positive two. So those are the two values we cannot include. We also see that we have an asymptote at negative three and at positive two. So we have negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to two, union two to infinity. And so those are the two values that we're gonna jump over, we're gonna skip from our domain, everything else is included. Our range though, this graph is a perfect example as to why you have to graph for rational functions. You have to be able to see that graph and know what you're looking at. Because we see here that our function has passed through the horizontal asymptote at one half. And normally you would include uh, or have a, a union around that asymptote, but because we have a cubic in the middle, this, uh, this range is actually negative infinity to infinity. So we've included every value that exists on the y-axis. Um, now for our end behavior, we're going to take a look at um, as x approaches negative infinity first. So as our graph goes to the left, heads towards negative infinity, what is our function doing? So f of x is approaching this asymptote. This asymptote happens to be at 1 half. So we're approaching 1 half. And as our graph, or sort of ask, as x approaches infinity, our, what is our graph doing on the right side here? Well, our graph is approaching, again, getting really close to 1 half, but never actually going to cross it. So that's always going to be that horizontal asymptote that our graph, our end behavior, heads towards. We want to make that connection there. We do want to pay attention um, to our graph, and if there's any weird things that happen, again, the range is something you really want to pay attention to as the picture, as the image, and not necessarily just picking out pieces that you normally skip over for the graph. So um, when we go to graph this, we do want to make sure we factor this. We'll take out a 4 to start, x minus 1 in the numerator. Here we'll take out an x, x squared minus x minus 2. Factor that again, or x minus 1 um, over x x minus, well, let's see, two factors, a negative two, add new and negative one, are going to be minus two and positive one. All right, so we have nothing that cancels here. Um, so, Jace, just kidding, this cancels right here. We have a hole at one, negative one, because that was a negative four. So when we go to graph this, we have an uh, asymptote at, zero, we have another one at mm, positive two, we have a bottom heavy graph, so our graph will look like this on the horizontal asymptote, um, we'll have a hole at negative one, so we'll need to plug negative one back in, if we do that we get negative four over negative one times negative one minus two is negative three, so that ends up being uh, negative four thirds, is where our hole is going to be at one negative four thirds. We'll put that in our graph as well, at one negative four thirds, so look right there. Um, and that looks odd to me. That is at negative one negative four thirds, that's why that be not there, but at negative one, negative four thirds. That looks much better. There we go. All right, so this tells me that I have a piece of my graph here. I will tell you right now that you have one, two, three, four. Your graph is a small parabola at positive four, and your last piece of your graph ends up being here. If you type this on your graphing calculator, you'd be able to see what that looks like.
I already did that so I knew what mine was going to look like. So what, what we care about for this graph, the whole reason we are looking at a graph that looks like this, is because we want to know the domain and range. So the domain of this function, we're looking left to right, any values in the denominator that make the denominator zero. There are three of them. So we will have three unions. There, our first one occurs at negative one, where there's a hole. Then we have an asymptote at zero, and then one at two. So we have negative infinity, two, negative one, union, negative one, two, zero, union, zero, two, two, union, two, two, infinity. So you've taken care of our three gaps, our three things that we're going to skip in our domain. The range is a little trickier here, so make sure you're paying attention to the range. We have that negative infinity until we get to the y value of our whole. We found out that this was at negative 4 thirds, so we're going negative infinity to negative 4 thirds, union, negative 4 thirds, until we get to that asymptote at zero. But here's the thing, we get to that asymptote at zero, and there is not something right on the other side of it. We don't have another value until we get to positive 4 on the y-axis. So we have union bracket at 4 because we are including the value at 4. There is no open circle there. There is a point at y equals 4. So we have a bracket of 4, and that goes on for forever to infinity. So this is why it's important to look at your graph and make sure that you are actually looking at your graph when you decide what the range is. The range is not something that you can look at the equation and necessarily see and just know what it's going to look like. The domain, yeah, we're going to just look at the x's in the denominator, but the range, we need to take some time to look at that. Um, end behavior then, we look at end behavior as x approaches negative infinity. So as we head to the left here, what is our graph heading towards? Well, our graph is heading towards zero, that horizontal asymptote. Same thing for heading to the right, as we approach positive infinity, our graph is approaching zero as we head to the right. 